The Terminids will be contained. The automatons dismantled. You are democracy's most elite, least hesitant defense. I'm aware these might be my last minutes on Super Earth, under the penalty of treason, of course, but I have to tell the truth before the Ministry of Truth silences me. We are not the good guys. Do you know what will happen when you lose? Nothing. We will not take your home. Our incessant assault on Mavalon Creek, Fanfare 3, Meridia, it's all a farce for capital gain. The bugs and the automatons are not the problem, we are. That was such a shitty intro. <laughs> yeah, but for real, you're not supposed to be the hero in Helldivers 2. I mean, ask the simple question. Why don't the bodies of our fallen brothers in the Terminate Sector show any signs of injury that would indicate any attack from the bugs? All their limbs are intact, no sign of bile anywhere, and mysteriously, they're filled with bullet holes. Even the mob is not that shady. There's something going on. And how do bugs spread across intergalactic distances when they don't even have the intelligence to build a goddamn chair, <laughs> let alone ships? I'm going to tell you a few things that the Ministry of Truth doesn't want you to hear. Believe it or not, finding lore for the Helldivers universe is no easy task. Considering that the idiots who wrote the fandom wiki decided to heavy roleplay as a citizen of Super Earth who is compliant with a fascist system and omit and shirt up lie about the origin of our enemies. Which is a cool idea, but somewhat really goddamn annoying when you try to find out some answers about the game. Idiots. But through some thorough internet research, as much as my ADHD allows me to anyway, and small bits of lore in Helldivers 2, I was able to find out the truth. Allow me to rewind this to 2015, with the release of the first Helldivers game. Looking back, the game shares almost no resemblance to what we have today with Helldivers 2. It looks like a completely different video game franchise, with a top-down view rather than the breathtaking third-person view shooter that we are obsessed with obviously. But it is a really good source for finding out exactly what started this whole intergalactic war. Actually, both of them. Opposed to what you may know today, this whole conflict didn't start with two factions, but rather three, and the automatons were not even in the map at this point. The concept of hyper-militaristic and managed democracy of Super-Earth takes a heavy influence from George Orwell's 1984 novel, where the whole society sold the idea of democracy, regardless of the population being surveilled 24-7, and with limited free will, where infractions can even be punished by death. Managed democracy offers true freedom. Freedom from the burden of choice. So much so that in Helldivers 2 you can actually hear the democracy officer and ship crew mention something regarding their voting system. I heard that some dissidents wanted us to select our own candidates instead of using the algorithm. <laughs> Great idea. Everyone will just become a political expert overnight. Citizens answer a series of questions, of which answers will determine what the government can or cannot get away with. So the citizens don't actually vote for who they want, but rather for what the government seems fit from their ideals. A democratic preference ballot, they call it. Which is a fancy way of saying vote interference. And it goes without saying, doesn't seem like a democracy whatsoever. Hence the term managed democracy, where they basically hold your hand when it comes to making decisions, whether that is a helping hand or a slapping one. On March 24th, 2084, Super Earth established the first ever contact with extraterrestrial life. This newfound excitement must have precisely lasted about 9 seconds, when humans found out that their precious democracy did not spread throughout the universe. Official reports going as far to admitting that the contact was rather peaceful and uneventful. Even the Terminids that we see as murderous bugs were initially very kind and peaceful towards the citizens of Super-Earth. Despite the thick language barrier, they did not pose a threat to anyone. The same applying to the Illuminid, which was this fish kind of people that was heavy on theological studies and religion. But don't get it twisted, as this obsession did not hinder their evolution. This species was incredibly intelligent and advanced. In fact, far more advanced than humans as they achieved space travel thousands of years before. 
And the cyborgs, and no, I don't mean the automatons, as automatons were not even a thing back then, were pretty much a new civilization that arose from the colonists of Super Earth that were sent to the mines of the planet Cyberstan in the Valdez sector. Due to the remote nature of this planet, Super Earth had very little control or influence which allowed to these citizens to implement their own ruling system that would be far better adapted and comfortable to the population. That would mostly look like a form of communism slash socialism rather than the managed democracy that was installed on Super Earth. The harsh conditions of this planet also made that these citizens had to heavily modify their bodies to endure such conditions, becoming half human, half mechanized hence the name cyborgs. So as you can see, despite the differences in how they looked and how they behaved, all four civilizations, humanity, terminates, cyborgs and illuminate, lived at peace with no reason for any conflict. So what happened? Well, let me ask you, what brings greater unity than a common enemy? It didn't take long for Super Earth scientists to figure it out that a good bug is a dead bug. Inside the Terminant's bodies, there was a substance called Element 710, 710, whatever you want to call it, of which if you flip it, it oddly reads as oil. Hmm. So despite their peaceful coexistence between humans and the bugs, now each of their heads actually represented a whole lot of credits, dollars, whatever currency there is on Super Earth. And I don't know about you, but peace doesn't seem that profitable to me. So the first intergalactic war kicks in, with a clear intention of humans wanting to imprison innocent bugs to extract this precious element. These bugs were so peaceful that they barely resisted at first, but you can only push a civilization so far until they retaliate and that's exactly what these bugs did. So much so that their bodies at some point actually adapted to essentially being pure killing machines but not without the help of the humans that captured them. Which serve as a great propaganda tool from Super Earth officials to show how violent of a species this truly was when it was in fact Super Earth that pushed for this violence. You know, these actually aren't exactly the same bugs we fought in the Great Galactic War. <laughs> yeah, 100 years of rapid evolution, not to mention all the genetic modification they got on the E710 farms. Now, even though the cyborgs didn't really escape Super Earth's wrath, as their way of life was supposedly a threat to managed democracy, they were still branded as a bunch of cybernetically socialist freaks, and it was only going to be a matter of time until they declare war on the cyborgs too. However, the problem is, you still need to rally some form of support from your populace to actually justify a war on two fronts. Because at some point, it makes it seem like you're the invading party rather than the defending one. Now this is where the truth gets a little bit muddy, as anything related with Super Earth is, really. But evidence suggests that there was a false flag operation led by the government of Super Earth, resulting in the bombing of thousands of innocent lives. Now, despite the fact that the cyborgs pretty much had no reason to do this whatsoever at this stage, and that they never claimed to be the authors of said attack, Earth officials were still very quick to blame these cyborgs, and the population bought it up. After all, it is easy to sell such an idea when in a part of the universe you already have some disgusting bugs threatening your way of life. And then there was the issue with the Illuminate. Now, starting a war here was a little bit harder as to persuade people to attack such a peaceful and advanced civilization, even if a little bit preach it sometimes, was going to be a harder task than some rebellious cyborgs. They didn't seemingly need anything from us. They could do everything bigger and better. But this is where Helldivers gets a little bit way too close to real life, as Super Earth leaders take a move straight out of Bush's playbook by claiming that the Illuminate, get this one, was stockpiling WMDs, weapons of mass destruction. Huh? At the end of the war, it was found that, whoops, they did not have said weapons. In fact, they were nowhere to be seen. And that's a super interesting aspect of this game, where you can actually draw some sort of similarity between these events and historical American military history events, making this game feel like almost like a parody. WMDs was the excuse that Bush used to attack Iraq. False flag operations were actually intended for use to rally support against Cuba in 1962 with Operation Northwood. Thankfully, it never happened. And well, in general, if you are a country in the Gulf that has any oil in the 90s, well, be prepared to be liberated, motherfucker. <laughs> 
Now, I don't intend to turn this into a geopolitical history video, but it is important to draw this image that maybe, just maybe, we're not really fighting a war for freedom, but rather for credits and power. Prior to any instigation caused by Super Earth, none of these three civilizations actually made a move against Super Earth, the planet, or even any planet around us. I mean, none of these planets are even ownership of Super Earth. Even if civilizations started to, in fact, take over these planets, there would still be no sign of aggression. Now, considering that in Helldivers 2, Super Earth is pretty much still owned by humans, and cyborgs and Illuminate are not to be seen anywhere, it is fair to assume that Super Earth won the first intergalactic war. The Terminated Civilization was reduced to a bunch of imprisoned bugs that were being farmed for its resources, the rest of the cyborgs were again enslaved to the mines of Cyberstan, and the Illuminate simply disappeared. We cast the Illuminate from our galaxy and secure the half-human cyborgs safely in the minds of Cyberstan. Possibly moving to unknown and uncharted parts of the universe. However, they might reappear in the future as a new war with two fronts seems like a great opportunity to strike an already busy Super Earth. As certain players have already started to experience some sort of surge in unexplainable beings of energy. But I'm gonna side with Ministry of Truth in this one. I'll chalk it up to exploding blueberries and even though it seemed like a period of peace was coming called the great democratization the bugs and the cyborgs did not forget this humiliating defeat escalating it to an even bigger war and deadlier as we may have guessed by now super earth reaped a great amount of benefit from the first intergalactic war you're probably wondering why do they want element 710 so much and why did they actually go to war against the illuminate well these are actually interconnected as the ftl jump technology nice oh shit that we use to jump from planet to planet was actually discovered by the illuminate but the energy used for these ftl jumps come under the form of element 710. That's why humanity was so willing to jump head first into a three front war. Now this is a part where we jump into the events of Helldivers 2, a hundred years after the first intergalactic war. As you may very well be aware, we only have two enemies, the Terminids and the Automatons. Well, for the bugs, we already know where they come from. As a result of the first intergalactic war, they were actually able to escape the prison camps that we set them on to extract the element 710, which resulted in this kind of double damage situation, as we were the first ones to place said bugs in these planets, as most of these were not even indigenous to them. Meaning humanity now faces an even bigger threat as the bugs spread even more across planets. But automatons are a surprise guest in all this. Who are they and where do they come from? Now this piece of information I was actually able to confirm from the official Twitter of Helldivers. And no Elon Musk, I'm not gonna call it X, that's stupid. Automatons are essentially the children of the cyborgs of the first intergalactic war. In fact, their insignias are pretty much almost the same. Cyborgs are so disgusted of their human counterpart following such a gruesome conflict that they decided to essentially strip themselves away from any humanity left and created a whole civilization of machines altogether. The automatons do actually have a language. They were actually designed to create their own infrastructure, given the ability to build, and the ability to choose whatever kind of government they wish, giving a sense of free will and sentience to these beings. If that Twitter post was not enough evidence for you to be convinced that the automatons are the children of cyborgs, the propaganda pieces spread out by Super Earth classifies automatons as socialists. The socialist automatons terrorize innocent families. Which would make sense with the original cause of war for for the cyborgs. Cyborgs were set in the crosshairs because they dared to not have a form of managed democracy in their own home planet of Cyberstan. And now automatons are seen as their evolution, therefore another horde of socialists who wish to eradicate our very own way of life. But do they? So the cool thing about the second intergalactic war is that it's still ongoing. So not only we get to see the effects in real life, we are also able to dictate the outcome. 
which is part of the whole thing that makes Helldivers 2 so uniquely addictive. As the war goes on, Super Earth seems to be doing pretty well. We're, we're dying by the bunch, but doing well. A vast majority of planetary systems are under our control. We have engineered huge towers with the sole purpose of exterminating all bugs in the planets where we install them in. Automatons are still able to hold on to Mavalon Creek for now, but we're also able to protect our buffer sectors. And although we can say without a doubt, this war started through mutual escalation, are we really guilt-free from all this? Albeit it is true that the Terminates are able to travel across space, we still don't know exactly how they managed to do this. If we follow Starship Troopers lore, which is a huge inspiration for the game, a theory suggests that they may spread through the propagation of spores. But this is not an actual Starship Troopers game, so that would be pure speculation. But one thing we can say for sure is that we are mostly to blame for this spread. One major reason we have so many bugs in so many different places is because we migrated them ourselves. You know, when we were farming them like cattle, and now we act surprised that they want liberty from oppression. Hmm. Maybe the bugs are not so different from us at all. Also, if the spores theory is correct, the fact that we constantly land pelicans across multiple planets, it is also fair to think that we are also spreading their reproduction this way by landing in planets that are essentially not ours. And sure, they are vicious killers. God knows how much I hate those stalkers, man. But if you stop sipping that sweet cup of liver tea, you start putting some things into equation here. Bugs are simply fighting a system of oppression that we initiated. If we don't stop the bugs' mindless reproduction, the burden's going to fall on our children and our children's children. These seemingly dumb bugs were actually trying and willing to communicate with us, and they never explicitly made any attempt to evade Super Earth or any of its colony planets, which didn't even belong to us in the first place. How can we say the bugs are an invasive species when we are the ones out there spreading democracy all over the place? Down, up, left, down, up, right, down, up. That's code for democracy, baby. <laughs> In fact, the Terminus never made any attempt in invading a populated planet. You know, the problem with the bugs is that they're relentless expansionists. In their region of space, we found them on nearly every planet we've settled. The same way they didn't oppose to where we spread, why do we? And the automatons are no different. Sure, when you look at the automatons as a brand new faction, they started out as murderous Terminator, basically, the whole Skynet thing. But when you look at them as children of the cyborgs, you can see a civilization that simply wants to live peacefully in their own system, with their own planet and rules. That's not Skynet at all. We will not decimate you. We will not take your home. We will return to Cyberstan and rebuild what you destroyed. And we will leave you alone. Now, I know what you might be thinking. This seems fan-made. There's no official source for this message or audio. And you're right. At least I haven't been able to confirm this as official anywhere else. But this message seems to fit the narrative of official dev-made message sent by cyborgs themselves. If we rewind back to the events of Helldivers 1, there is also another message shared in 2021 by the devs that, when translated from binary, also shows the true intentions of cyborgs and the automatons alike. We, the collective of Cyberstan, unanimously assert our independence from Super Earth. We have the right to defend our home from the brainwashed Helldivers. Our children, the automaton, will not suffer as we have under the oppression of super earth this is worse than simple oppression this is multi-generations long <laughs> and i've seen multiple players express how gruesome automatons can be therefore their intentions have to be misleading but you cannot throw a stone and then blame the retaliation yes they have put human heads on pikes killed prisons of war all that is extreme and awful but aren't we the ones sending in the bodies even for the bugs. Can we really be surprised by their violence now? They didn't start this. They didn't call for any of this. I'm pretty sure bugs would be happy just rolling balls of bile or some shit they do it. I don't know. And if we take players' arguments seriously, which is dumb considering this is just a fictional game, but still, they are, regardless, arrogant. 
You don't get to dictate how a civilization reacts to aggression. I shall remind you they didn't attack Super Earth first. At least not from what the sources state. I'm pretty sure Super Earth leaders will even tell you, yeah, we made the first move to bring some liberty to those godforsaken creatures. But even with a brand new species, we were unable to live and let live. Here I was, landing on Mavalon Creek time and time again, to now find out that they don't wish to invade us? To take what's ours? To use us? They simply want to take what's theirs? So I just noticed they're not expanding inwards towards Super Earth. They instead are expanding on this side, which now it makes sense why. And now there these socialists have a way of life for themselves. On their own home planet. Ugh, disgusting. God damn, we're letting some shrimp looking motherfuckers and Terminator's cousins have more humanity than us. How are we losing at this? If we were to rate Super Earth's ability to establish diplomacy, it would be as subtle as a napalm edema. I mean, what are we doing here? Why are we destroying illegal broadcasts in bug territory when they barely are able to speak between each other? Are these bugs majoring in multimedia now? And why are these human soldiers dead with no indication of bug attacks? And why do we always find them when there's a spot for illegal broadcasts? Oh shit. Are we the bad guys? Uh, duh. <laughs> no shit, we're the bad guys. This would be a crazy conspiracy if we're not part of a civilization that punishes interspecies fertilization with death. So yes, there's a high chance that there's a secret tier of hell divers that have a very specific directive to neutralize any humans deemed as sympathizers to the enemy. If you think you're a part of an elite group of soldiers, think again. We would start growing a conscious if all of a sudden our main objectives were to neutralize Super Earth citizens. And Lady Liberty doesn't really like hell divers with a conscious, does she? When it comes to ethics, everyone has a different perspective, and I sure hope that you don't take this video too seriously as I have. <laughs> Just for show, okay? The truth is, it might not matter who started it all. What matters is that someone has to end it, and that means the winner. Maybe the bugs truly do want to take over Super Earth, so giving up doesn't seem like an option either. But it's fair to say that if there is any outrage that has to be directed at something, it should be Super Earth leaders. Because after all, what are we gonna do, blame fucking bugs? <laughs> If we really believe they're mindless, that would make it the more ridiculous. As they have no brains, like they have no understanding of what's happening. Like, to them, war doesn't exist. This reminds me of the emu war. I mean, like, <laughs> these creatures don't even grasp the concept of war. And by the way, the emu war actually happened. So yeah, like, that's not even a video game parody. That shit actually happened. We fought emus. <laughs> but if you do realize they are conscious and sentient and all that kind of shit, then I would expect you to at least understand they didn't ask for this. The automatons only exist because the first war happened. And who truly had a problem with another civilization's way of life? It certainly wasn't the cyborgs, they were chilling. All I know is I didn't expect Helldivers 2, a game that is the personification of testosterone overload, to have me discussing humanitarian rights regarding bugs and robots. But yes, for any effect, we are the bad guys and the war is wrong. But the hell is that sound? 